Good afternoon and welcome to Matador News. I'm Jocelyn Partida. And I'm Lauren Janos. A new governmental study shows a disproportionately high suspension and expulsion rate for students of color. The study says white students represent 51% of enrollment, but only one out of three students get suspended. Of the 49% of enrollment for students of color, two out of three students get suspended. Now we go to Matador News reporter Shanae Amara with more on the story. Joining me today is school counseling faculty member, Dr. Shira Minton. Dr. Minton, thank you for joining us today. Oh, thank you for having me. So according to a new governmental study that was released, um, children of color in public schools are um, more likely to be suspended than white children. What do you think are causing these disparities and do you think there is an underlining issue? I think we have to approach this issue systemically. So it's not just one thing that's causing the disparity in higher discipline rates for black children, per, for, for example. There are issues with regard to the administrator's perspectives related to discipline, how they perceive discipline. Also, we have issues related to capital. So for example, students who come to school with different levels of cultural capital, for example. Looking at things related to education in the home, how that's perceived, do they have the perception that they can be successfully, um, they can be successful academically? Um, types of speech, types of dress, all that comes into play when students enter into the school setting day one. In addition, we have to look at the training of School, school officials. So we look at the training of administrators, of school counselors, of teachers as well, what types of training related to engaging students who are of diverse backgrounds are they receiving? And it's not enough to simply have that training in a school, uh, in your graduate or your post baccalaureate program. You have to embed that training into how you interact and engage with students in the school setting. And so I think without a focus on the issue systemically, looking at the different um, pieces at play, the different pieces on the board, then we're not going to be able to move beyond um, these, these issues which were discussed in the report from NPR. So what um, are better ways that can change the discipline or can change um, these results for the suspension? Well, I think if we attack the issue systemically, as I mentioned just a moment ago, and we look at things like positive behavior support. So in my discipline in school counseling, our counseling students are engaged in learning how to implement a multi-tiered positive behavioral intervention and support system at the school site. So that's very similar to RTI, which responds to intervention, which targets academic issues for students. So positive behavioral support targets issues related to um, behavior and behavioral concerns in the classroom. So it's multi-tiered, there are three tiers. There's a general tier for students who for the entire school site to engage in. So that's like school rules, school expectations, be safe, be responsible, be respectful, those types of things. And then there's another level of support for those identified students, typically about 10 to 15% of the population, where they're going to receive additional intervention. Thank you so much for um, oh, joining wow. us, Dr. Minton. Um, back to you in the studio. Thousands of people oh, are still no. waiting I to return to their homes down. after an earthquake struck Chile last night, killing six people. The magnitude 8.2 was centered offshore and caused some strong waves, but authorities say it could have been much worse. Several roads are blocked and some houses were destroyed. 300 prisoners broke out of an earthquake damaged jail in the northern part of Chile. The National Tsunami Warning Center earlier had issued a tsunami warning for Hawaii and South America's west coast, but it was canceled. The situation is continuing to be monitored for further information. They say money doesn't buy happiness, but it may help buy political campaigns. In a 5-4 to four ruling today, the Supreme Court eliminated limits on how much money individuals can donate in one election season. Chief Justice John Roberts wrote that the 1976 decision limiting the total amount of money donors can give to candidates, committees, and political parties was unconstitutional. The, the ruling leaves in place the base limits on what can be donated to each individual campaign. But the justices ruled that the overall limits of $48,600 by individuals every two years for contributions to all federal candidates violated the First Amendment. 
Justice Stephen Breyer called the decision a blow to the First Amendment and American democracy. President Obama is in Michigan today and is continuing his effort to increase the minimum wage for all workers. He announced in February that in 2015, businesses with new or renewed federal contracts will have to pay minimum wage workers $10.10 an hour. The proposal may not be popular with Republicans in Congress, but the Obama administration hopes it will be the push Democrats need to vote in the congressional elections later this year. We sent our Matador News reporters to hit the CSUN campus and ask students how they feel about the president's proposal. I think it's a really good idea because people that we want struggle to get money and they're going to be able to pay um, everything they have to pay, like bills and their cars, insurances. So I think it's a really good idea and they're going to make more money. For, you know, the students that are working, you know, it can help towards their books, you know, anything that they need to get. It's good. It's really good. I believe it's a great idea. There's many people who actually need the money for all their nece necessities. But then again, it could affect us in many ways. What if once our payment goes up, what if all our other expenses will go up as well? Um, I think that's honestly a really good idea about uh, minimum wage. I mean, a lot of people these days are working, you know, two, three jobs just to try to get by. So I think that's a really good push for the country, definitely. California's minimum wage currently resides at $8 an hour. Effective July 1st, 2014, it will rise to $9. General Motors CEO testifies today for the second time to answer why she didn't recall the faulty vehicle sooner. Some of the vehicles which contain dangerous power steering issues have been linked to 13 deaths. The recall refers to the engine transitioning into accessory mode, cutting off the engine, power steering mode, and the airbags. Barra will be asked whether or not General Motors will take responsibility for the deaths despite their 2009 bankruptcy case that cleared them of liability. Three bombs exploded today outside Cairo University's main campus in Egypt. The first two blasts killed a police general and wounded seven others, including several top police officials. The bombings are the latest in a slew of attacks targeting Egypt's government and military after the Muslim Brotherhood was ousted last July. Officials say the blasts were caused by improvised explosive devices. Since the overthrow of the Brotherhood and President Mohamed Morsi, more than 1,000 people have been killed and thousands detained by authorities. Mexican President Enrique Peña Nieto is proposing a telecommunication law to break up the country's much-criticized television and telephone monopolies. The largest Spanish-speaking broadcast, Televisa, has dominated the country's television network. Mexican tycoons and the second richest man, Carlos Slim, own all, cell phone, all, own all cell phone telephone services. Many Mexicans say they welcome the breakup of these monopolies, but it is still unclear whether the proposal will accomplish its goal. The Washington landslide has claimed the lives of 29 people with 20 people missing. Officials have identified 22 of the victims. Governor Jay Inslee has asked President Obama for additional federal aid for rural Snohomish County. Inslee is requesting sandbags, barricades, and help in clearing debris. The landslide also destroyed dozens of homes. Autism has affected millions of children in America. Karen has more on Autism Awareness Day. Thank you. Today is Autism Awareness Day and April is Autism Awareness Month. One in 68 American children has an autism spectrum disorder. This has increased 30% in the past two years. Children with autism continue to be overwhelmingly male. The Center for Disease Control estimates one in 42 boys have autism. The problem with autism autism is its late diagnosis. The average diagnosis of children with autism is four years of age. Researchers are working on finding new ways to detect the condition earlier. Experts say that helping children cope with autism is the best way to give them the full quality of life. 
The Affordable Care Act, most commonly known as Obamacare, has its sign-up target mark. 7.1 million people made the deadline for enrollment. The sign-up started small and slowly back and slowly back in October and ended with a crash of people rushing to make the deadline. Despite Republican criticism, President Obama says he was pleased with the overall process of the program and claims victory for the health care coverage. Yes, at times this reform has been contentious and confusing. And obviously it's had its share of critics. That's part of what change looks like in a democracy. Change is hard. Fixing what's broken is hard. Millions of Americans are embracing the overall goal of the narrowing the gap between those with health, health coverage and those without. Back to you, Lauren. Thank you, Karen. And now to Ola with business. Thank you, Karen. BlackBerry has cut its ties with America's large, fourth largest wireless carrier after a controversial promotion of the iPhone 5S. T-Mobile offered its customers the latest Apple phone for free, saying it was a great offer for BlackBerry customers. BlackBerry will continue to provide services for existing T-Mobile customers. Verizon, AT&T, and Sprint are still selling BlackBerry devices. Google Maps definitely put a smile on the faces of many Pokemon fans. The company decided to pull an April Fool's prank a little early this year. They announced on Monday that there would be a new job opening titled Pokemon Master. Google hit a bunch of Pokemons throughout the latest version of Google Maps. And the challenge? To catch them all, of course. Back to you, Jocelyn. And now Karen will give us the latest news in sports. Thanks, Jocelyn. Dodger fans are being forced to purchase Time Warner Cable if they want to watch the games at home. Dodgers are trying to make a deal with Time Warner Cable to broadcast every baseball game. Cal State Northridge students talk about how the change will affect them. From my personal experience, they have really bad customer service. They're, they're really a pain to work with. So um, for some people, it's forcing them into a bad situation. I mean, it's pretty good for me. I have Time Warner Cable, so. I feel like it's good. It sucks because I can't really watch all the Lakers games, all the Lakers games like I usually do. Mm -hmm. So I think it'll, it'll be the same thing for Dodger fans if they don't have Time Warner Cable. Um, really bummed about it. I have DirecTV, so I can't watch it. So I'm really bummed about that. The Dodgers will play San Francisco Giants on Saturday. Former Philadelphia Eagles wide receiver John Jackson agrees to terms on a three-year contract with the Washington Redskins. Jackson signed a deal worth $24 million, including $60 million guaranteed. The Eagles released Jackson on a Friday without giving a reason, following an NJ.com report saying that he was affiliated with gang members in Southern California. NJ.com reported that the Eagles were worried about Jackson's work ethic and bad attitude. The 27-year-old is coming off off one of the best seasons of his career with 82 catches for over 1,300 yards and nine touchdowns. The NCAA March Madness continues this weekend as the final four men's and women's basketball teams get ready for the championship games. This Saturday, the men's basketball team's Florida Gators will be playing against Connecticut Huskies and the Wisconsin Badgers will play against Kentucky's Wildcats. Both games will take place this Saturday at the AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas. The women's college basketball teams are also headed to championship games. Connecticut will be playing against Stanford and Notre Dame will be playing against Maryland on Saturday, I'm sorry, on Sunday at the Bridgestone Arena in Nashville, Tennessee. And now back to you, Lauren. Thank you, Karen. Now to Ola with the latest news in entertainment. Thank you, Lauren. Oprah Winfrey's network gains its best ratings ever. The first and so far only network inspired by a single individual has an average of 508,000 viewers. The Oprah Winfrey network scored its most watched quarter in network history, making it the fastest growing cable network for women ages 25 to 54. It is also the number one cable network for African American women. Although the S&P 500 has hit a new high, investors are cautious as they wait for Friday's March unemployment report. At last check, the Nasdaq is currently up 10.92 points. The Dow Jones Industrial Average is up 54.20 points. Students around campus are staying warm by wearing heavy coats and scarves today. It is partly cloudy with temperatures around mid-50 degrees. Umbrellas may be needed if you're heading out later today as there is an 85% chance of rain. 
Thunderstorms are also possible with stray showers. Now back to you, Jocelyn. Thank you for watching Matador News. I'm Jocelyn Partida. And I'm Lauren Janos. Have a great afternoon.